Syria. People dying in flooded areas in Louisiana, fires in California. We find ourselves struggling to make sense of our world. Political rhetoric, suffering, of loss, of greed, Lord, we look at this world and we wonder where your presence is. And yet, Lord, we showed up this morning because we believe in your presence in this world. We seek your grace now for those in pain and suffering. We seek your comfort for those surrounded by disaster. We seek your holy righteousness for those who make choices that are immoral, harmful, shameful. We seek your joy for those who grieve. We ask you, Lord, to be present, but Lord, we know that even as we ask it, we have to commit ourselves to being in your hands and feet in this world. Take us from our place of complacency, of apathy, of ignorance, and move us to be more than your fans your followers. Ask these things as we enter a time of study so that you may move through our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So how many of you have made a pillow fort in your life? He knew that a child's life needed a place to get away. 
amazing. We were the envy of every kid in the entire neighborhood. It was beautiful and oh, we had such fun in our tree fort without a tree. My father understood that children need sacred space, a place of refuge, a place of comfort, and we sure did. And it was lovely to always have a sense that there was a special place where a kid could go and be themselves, create, deal with the world in their own way, work on the world until it was a shape we could understand. I hope you had places like that in your childhood. I hope you had places like that that were full of joy. The writer of this song expresses a deep, pervasive, and abiding faith. In the verse 5, we see the writer expresses that even from his childhood, God has been his refuge and his hope. He's relied on God his entire life. He recognizes that God has brought him from his mother's womb. There's a beautiful faith there, and it's just expressed so lovingly. But the truth is that this writer is in some kind of crisis. Now, I would love to tell you exactly what that crisis is. But nobody knows. I would love to tell you exactly what it is and illuminate it so we can say, oh, yeah, I've been through that. Or, oh, that's awful. But we don't have that. Whatever it is, we know that the writer is frightened. He's shaken to his very core. He's disturbed. Perhaps he's telling us that he's lost his job. And he doesn't know how he's going to pay rent. Maybe that's it. Or perhaps, perhaps he's sick. And he's in the donut hole right now. And his medical bills are way too high. <clears throat> Maybe he needs surgery and he doesn't know how he's going to pay for it. That would be a horrible situation, a scary situation. Perhaps he's ended a relationship or needs to end a relationship that he's come to rely on, but it's no longer healthy for him. Maybe he's lost a loved one. Maybe he's grieving. Maybe he's on Social Security and he's trying to stretch that last check as far as he can to cover as much of the grocery bill as he possibly can and still pay for the basic necessities. Whatever it is, he needs a pillow for it. The truth of the matter is that no matter how strong our faith is, life brings us a certain quantity of pain. It leaves us shaken and vulnerable at times. You know, many preachers wouldn't feel like it was okay to talk with you today about losing my dad, about what pillow forts mean to me, but the psalm writer goes there, right? The psalm writer says to God, I'm shaken and I'm scared. And even though you've always been there for me, I need to know you'll be there for me this one more time. The psalmist is emotionally accessible, and so I think that's a fair enough witness to us of how we should be with each other. He affirms that God has always been faithful, and yet he has to express his fears, his pain, his desires for comfort. That gnawing concern in the pit of his stomach that God might deserve him. And there are people out there preaching that Christianity looks like happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. They'll tell you that if you just believe hard enough, you'll be affluent, you'll have plenty, and you will be blessed. I can't say that I believe that so. 
sustain in the world, a refuge, a spiritual fortress. But there's beauty. There's beauty in the refuge we're offered because it's more than the sum of its parts. When we rest ourselves in the comfort of God as our pillow fort, we find that we are not alone, but in a place of belonging and safety, a place where we're able to be ourselves and to create and to express what we need in its fullness. My father built amazing pillow forts, and I miss him. I miss the spirit that said to me, I care enough about you to make this space safe, and to think about what would be most comforting and nurturing to you. But I know that the spirit is still here because on some level I know that he has always sought to show me, as his daughter, the face of God as a father. It was as though he said to me, I, as your father, will show you that refuge and that love of your heavenly father. I will be your safe place. It takes courage, doesn't it, to hold in tension the hope and the beauty of our faith, along with the pain and the struggle of this life. But you, my friends, are never alone. God holds you in that place of refuge. Whatever distress you may experience, whatever hardship you're given, is hard, it's painful. But you are not alone. God holds you in that place. You're surrounded by a God who loves you enough to build you a pillow fort big enough to heal all the hurts of this world. And he says to you, come play with me a while until you see the world more clearly. Until you know that the pain will not last forever. Until you know that I love you completely. Come play with me in this safe place. We can be that fort for each other. as you've been for me, and I thank you. Let us commit to continuing the pillow fort life together. Please pray with me. <laughs> Loving God, when we come to you as children, you wrap us in loving arms. You offer us a deep and abiding love. You comfort us and invite us to play in a world that you have made beautiful for us. Turn our eyes from despair and distress to your hope the wholeness of the human spirit, to the comfort of kindness found in each other, to the beauty of your creation. We pray in your sweet son's name.